Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the workshop for odds under ends. Look at this little guy, little cricket. I think it's a grasshopper. You, oh, grasshopper? Yeah. I think What's the difference? Uh, crickets are like black and they chirp. Welcome back to the workshop for odds under ends. This video is going to be a little bit of catch up on some of the things that we've needed to do and some of the things that we have done. First on the agenda is a quick thank you to today's sponsor. Today's episode is sponsored by Morning Brew, which is a completely free to use Monday to Saturday email newsletter that gets you up to date on business news and all the things that are going on in the world. What I used to do when I woke up is just start mindlessly browsing social media and rotting away my mornings. But what I now get to do with Morning Brew is read witty, relevant, and informative news to just get me up to speed with what's happening. It's so witty that they find a way to include bears in GIFs in your email. I think that's the type of news I can get on. And commentary like, after a month's long climb that would make even Alex Honnold proud, the S&P 500 finally completed its epic turnaround. I mean, that's hilarious. That's super witty. It's a reference to a climbing legend in regards to the S&P 500. What a good way to make your morning that little bit more informative and enjoyable. You'll get updates on real estate, updates on tech, update on media topics, and you'll occasionally get yourself a crossword to play too. Morning Brew is completely free to sign up to, and you can do it in just 15 seconds by clicking my link in the description. Check them out, get yourself some informative news in the morning, and you supporting Morning Brew supports us. So thank you Morning Brew for sponsoring us. Thank you guys for checking them out. Let's get back into the video. Second thing, second, we have a gaping black hole above our Union Jack where there are no flags. And we need to put flags up there, and we've been meaning to put flags up there for almost the last two years. We have accumulated a lot of flags from you kind viewers. Unfortunately, we're not able to accept any more flags because we just have such a flag surplus. We can't do anything with them. But we will take from our flag inventory and we will decorate. Minnesota. I feel like this is an English county, but it's not Norfolk, so it doesn't matter. What's this? Oh! I've forgotten what this one is. Aha! Sasnak! Always wanted one of those flags. Ah, Iowa. I don't know what that is. Ammo Halco. Look at that. Hill Booper. Anirophilac. Georgia Tech. Okay, I think we've got some contenders. Oh, here we go. I think this is a gorgeous Australian flag. Let's go get a ladder. Alrighty, this is a tax state. I hate heights. Oh, no, I can't do it. Okay, I do not like heights well enough to be able to do that. This is better, but I still don't like it. Ah! This is terrifying. While I mess with these flags, there's better things to show you guys. Such as, a few months ago, Yogo outgrew her bowl for eating from, so I needed to make a bowl stand for Yogo the Golden Retriever Dog. So while I fuss with this, here's me forging a bowl stand. Mm. Quick and dirty, a little dog bowl stand, a little bit of oak, a little bit of linseed oil, a little bit of stainless steel in the dog bowl, a little bit of forged steel in the legs. Back to regularly scheduled programming, it is. So the dog bowl video, the dog bowl video was from several months ago. Yogo's grown even more, but that's okay, because I've got an opportunity to show you Yogo even more, because I had to fix a necklace that I made for my wife a while back. Hello, everybody. We're joined by little Yogo Steel, and she is going to be helping me fix one of my wife's bits of jewelry that I made. Yogo, speak. 
Oh, oh, who's a good girl? So here it is. This is a forged steel necklace that I made her, and it has a flush set, gypsy setting diamond in some gold that's riveted in there. I made this about two years ago, the first gift that I made her, and it involved me needing to solder a gold loop, and I'll show you that gold loop is starting to get worn away. So what you can see has happened is that the steel has worn away the gold loop in a few places there, and in a number of those places, it's really quite close to complete failure. So we've got to fix this before this gets lost. And put the chain back through, dip it in the ultrasonic, and that, folks, is a fixed necklace. Right, back to whatever we were doing. Yeah! You remember I recently made a mountain bike? Well, I've been taking it places and testing it, and I'm having a great time. I recently took it somewhere uh, where I had an unfortunately rattling experience. Watch out for rattlesnakes. All right, we're out for another ride on the mountain bike. If you've been following my Instagram, you've probably seen a lot of these gushing posts where I talk about how exciting it is to be able to ride this thing and how much fun I'm having on adventures with this bike. It's just incredible. It's an incredible thing to be able to experience something that you made doing what it's meant to do. This is meant to tackle terrain like this and give me a smile on my face. And it does indeed give me a great smile. Let's keep riding. One of the things I often find out in the wilderness is that I'm constantly playing this game of I really hope I don't see X, Y, Z dangerous wild animal and I really hope I do see X, Y, Z dangerous wild animal. Well, on the menu of possibilities for today, rattlesnakes, and yet, I'd love to be able to see one and not get bit, but be able to say, I've seen a rattlesnake. That's all I want. I want the accolades of having been a man to have seen a rattlesnake without the potential costs that make those accolades worthwhile. Essentially, I want a free ride on the back of this rattlesnake. Okie dokie. Looks like we're about at the top almost. Right, uh, which way down? Probably get some fuel in. Not far. Look what I just found. My axle is completely unthreaded. Oh, that's terrifying. Oh, thank goodness. Oh my goodness! Oh, 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 rattlesnake! Oh! Yeah, baby! Come on! Get some! Yee! 
I'm missing. Yes! I got one in! I also recently entered a socially distanced mountain bike race. The whole plan was to not come in last. Oh, okay. Just so you all know. I'm coming last and I know it. Have a good one, Jim. I'll be back here. I'm three minutes in and I can already taste blood in my mouth. I think I started a little hot. I went way too hard, way too fast. I'm about to get caught by my first pass. Okay, I've been passed. Oh no, I'm about to get passed again. We're actually gonna come in last. I've been passed again. And there we go, passed again and again. I really overcooked it at the beginning and I'm suffering the consequences. Alrighty, looking at the GPS. We are 7.8 miles in to a 16 mile hill climb race, which means we're about halfway in distance. But I don't think we're anywhere near halfway in elevation gain yet. I'm so exhausted. I started towards the end of the group in those staggered starts. I've not passed many people, but a good number of people have passed me. Don't fall off your bike. Don't fall off your bike. Don't fall off and cut your leg open. Ah! Holy moly. A little push. Time for a little walk. Oh, it's a cool mountain breeze striking me right now. Yes! Gravity's working for me, baby! Yeah! Come on! that folks 26th place I ended up not quite coming in last and that was just an awesome time and the last thing I have to share is that I took that hardtail mountain bike to a downhill mountain bike park and got to ride lifts with a bike for the first time and this was a hoot I also got my first flat tire
go. Wah! Oh, this one's sharp. This is a sharp rock. <laughs> Oh, oh, oh. Hand down. Hand around. Oh my goodness, it's so steep. But it's so fly with this side. I almost died. Ah! I might have a puncture. No? Is that what I think it is? No, we got a puncture, folks. We've got a bloody puncture. It's here. It's a bubbling mess. We got ourselves one bubbly mess. Oh no. So what I think happened is I went and pinched a rim, burped out some air. So check this out. Little CO2 can, same thing, a little uh, air pistol might be filled up with. Right, uh, screw it in. Oh wow, it's so flat, that's not funny. <gasps> oh no! So what it would appear has happened is we might have a puncture right there. So what's happened is I hit something and this tread just ripped open. All right, let's take one of these bad boys. We'll dart and take ourselves a multi-tool. We're gonna poke it in and see if it holds air. Come on! Okay, so I shoved a plug in the hole, and I think we might have just gone and fixed the thing. If I put my ear to it, I can still hear it hiss, but at least we have some air in here. All right, let's see if this tire will make it the whole way down. Wish me luck. Found the problem. I have bented, bented, bent this rim. Oh, and it's bad. No. Ah, that aluminium is not meant to be like that. In other news, have a look at this. This is our forge, completely taken apart. I would have mentioned this in a recent video, but something really interesting that the chaps have done is they've added about three or four inches onto either end. One of the problems that we were having with this forge is that front face of steel was oxidizing away. So we've cut it off, and when we cast our new refractory for it, we're gonna have it so that the face is entirely refractory. And to avoid eating away at this steel, the front of the forge is gonna be sitting back here. You'll see more of that soon in the future. I hope you've enjoyed this kind of informal little summary video of little parts of videos that haven't ever quite made it into videos over the last few months. It's been fun bringing you guys along. Can't wait to see you all soon. Bye-bye.